10, Jack Reacher, the Jack Reacher franchise. I am not a hero. A key point to being a vigilante is to be one step ahead of the bad guys. Jack Reacher goes above and beyond this trait by seemingly knowing everything exactly the way it happened as he tries to find a psychotic killer and eventually takes on an entire crime ring. Once I take out the leader, which is you, I'll have to contend with one or two enthusiastic wingmen. Although he only really becomes a vigilante at the end of the first Jack Reacher film, he uses his military know-how and the character's own psychologies against them. Adept and charming in his own way, with just the right amount of mercilessness, Jack Reacher is not someone to be messed with in any combat situation. I was born in October. When I get to my birthday, I'm gonna pull the trigger. Number 9. Shoshana Dreyfus, Inglorious Bastards. Je te suis pas. De quoi parlons-nous? De rompir le cinéma nazi et le détruire par le feu. Let's hear it for the ladies. This movie vigilante gets points for the most creative method of vengeance, using flammable film reels to get the literal last laugh on the entire Nazi command. In this little rewrite of history, Dreyfus manages to take out historical figures like Joseph Goebbels and even Adolf Hitler himself, sending a chilling message to the audience in her theater, taunting them with death. That you are all going to die. Although she accomplishes this with a little help from the bastards and doesn't even survive her lone act of vengeance, Shoshana Dreyfus has one of the highest body counts on our list. My name is Shoshana Dreyfus, and this is the face of Jewish vengeance. Number 8, Keller Dover, Prisoners. Pray for the best, prepare for the worst. Who said you have to be a killer to be a good vigilante? Such is the case for Keller Dover, who goes beyond the law to find his missing daughter. Using his handyman skills and an empty building willed to him by his father, Keller devises disturbing torture contraptions that spell trouble for the prime suspect in the kidnapping. Please don't do shit. He'll just clam up and act crazy like he did last time. Someone has to make him talk. Someone. While we can remain empathetic towards Keller for trying to find his daughter and right some wrongs, the flip side to his personality makes him all the more disturbing, and we can't help but want to distance ourselves from his dark deeds. He's not a person anymore. No, he stopped being a person when he took our daughters. Number seven, Brian Mills, The Taken Franchise. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. One of modern action cinema's chief vigilante characters, this former CIA operative with a particular set of skills, has transcended pop culture and turned his character into a memorable and quotable hero. You either give me what I need or this switch will stay on until they turn the power off for lack of payment on the bill. Where's my daughter? Known for slamming bad guys' heads into solid objects after already delivering a savage beating, Mills relies on previous combat experience and just about any grabbable object to dispatch his enemies in a calm and calculated manner. You know how to shoot? No. Then try. Leaving many bodies in his wake, Brian Mills strikes fear into the hearts of assassins, kidnappers, corrupt law officers, and pretty much anyone who dares mess with his family over the course of the franchise. This is gonna end bad for you. Don't be such a pessimist. Number six, Robert Bob McCall, The Equalizer. When you pray for a rain, you gotta deal with the mud too. Looks can be very deceiving. Kind-hearted hardware store employee by day, ruthlessly violent justice figure by night, Bob McCall stands up for the little guy, even if the threat is a group of ice-cold Russian gangsters. Who are you? Everybody wants to know. Based off a character from the hit 1980s television series of the same name, Actor Denzel Washington brings a lot more character to his role of McCall by having him afflicted with obsessive compulsive disorder. I promised someone that I love very much that I would never go back to being that person. But for you, I'm gonna make an exception. That's just the icing on the cake, however, as this makes him an even more efficient killer. Using his workplace as an arena, McCall manages to use common household tools to maximum deadly potential in a final showdown with the bad guys, giving them each around 16 seconds to live. Number five, the driver, Drive. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. Anything a minute either side of that and you're on your own. Ryan Gosling took the action world by storm in Nicholas Vending Refn's 2011 art house hit, Drive. 
As mysterious as he is unpredictable, this nameless vigilante is willing to sacrifice everything he has to ensure a woman and her son are never bothered again by a heartless gangster. Hey, do you want to see something? Yeah. Adhering to strict rules as a getaway driver, the driver manages to always get the upper hand when the tables are turned against him, putting him one step ahead of the bad guys, even when he is the one being chased down. Let's just say we wouldn't want to be trapped in an elevator with this guy. Shut your mouth. I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. Number four, John W. Creasy, Man on Fire. Uh, Last wish, please, please, please. Last wish. I wish you had more time. <laughs> Leave it to Denzel Washington to bring pathos to his vigilantes. Much like the Equalizer's Bob McCall, Washington's portrayal of ex-military hero John Creasy is loaded with character flaws that either put him on equal footing or one step beyond those who have wronged him. Forgiveness is between them and God. John Creasy works his way up the Mexican criminal food chain in order to rescue the girl he was hired to protect, racking up an impressive body count along the way. What are you gonna do? What I do best. I'm gonna kill him. As he targets his victims, Creasy ensures that their deaths become more and more elaborate. Yet he's professional enough to ensure that nobody is caught in the crossfire. Did we mention that he does all this while mortally wounded? Yeah, he's that good. Revenge is a meal best served cold. Number 3. V. V for Vendetta. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Not quite a superhero, but definitely on the same level. This mysterious character is both theatrical and sympathetic, while also being sadistically violent and merciless. If you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. After an alliteration-filled introduction, V takes on a dystopian government by encouraging the people of Britain to rise up against the oppressors. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. And you're going to make that happen by blowing up a building? Never taking credit for his own actions, V proves to be more an idea of vigilantism than an actual manifestation of it. With an interesting backstory and an anti-fascist agenda, V's methods of dispatching enemies range from quiet and painless to the psychologically devastating. Either way, he gets the job done in stunning fashion. I can assure you, I mean you no harm. Number two, Paul Kersey, The Death Wish Franchise. Fill your hand. A household name in vigilante lore, Paul Kersey is an unbridled force to be reckoned with once his ability to kill is awakened. Starting off as a tragic anti-hero in the first Death Wish film, Kersey gradually becomes the face of justice in four more sequels with more ridiculous bad guys and bigger guns. Tonight, we review an aging Charles Bronson in Death Wish 9. I wish I was dead. Needless to say, Kersey's story in the first film put many filmgoers' greatest anxieties on screen when it came to dealing with inner-city violence and urban fear. Kersey's actions were also seemingly and eerily mimicked in real life when Bernie Getz took the law into his own hands in a 1984 incident that paralleled the scene from the first Death Wish film. They say that he methodically shot four young men on a crowded 7th Avenue IRT Express just north of Chambers Street in Manhattan. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few gritty, honorable mentions. Estoy contigo. Jefe. This is the boss. Wait, bitch! Who's the bitch now? <laughs> Number one, Travis Bickle, taxi driver. You talking to me? You talking to me? He's a ticking time bomb ready to explode at any moment. Martin Scorsese and Paul Schrader's oddball creation, Travis Bickle, is an unsettling and oddly true-to-life depiction of society's dark corners. That's a very good answer. Although seemingly harmless, this likely-to-be-PTSD-afflicted Vietnam vet-turned-taxi driver doesn't seem to know the extent of his actions. Played in impeccable fashion by Robert De Niro, the quotable Travis Bickle wages a one-man war on the society that he feels has failed him. Practicing his lines toward pimps and thugs, this character reflects the average Joe taking the law into his own hands, 
making him the perfect vigilante. However, since he crosses the line in such chaotic fashion, Travis Bickle is at once a relatable yet distant character. <laughs> <laughs>